discuss five barriers to successful enterprise culture what the meaning of enterprise culture culture we know candidates the meaning of culture culture the way we do things the way we do things here enterprise it refers to just corporate enterprise is just corporate culture and enterprise culture refers to the shared values shared beliefs attitudes and behaviors that characterize an organization and shape the way its employees interact how its employees work and how they make decisions so enterprise culture is just shared values or beliefs or attitudes or behaviors okay you understand every organization has its own unique organizational culture what you are referring to as enterprise culture or corporate culture in other words corporate culture is the personality of a company if you work for a, a, a company you know what i'm talking about okay the way a company does its things the way the decisions are made the way the employees work how they interact is based on shared values beliefs attitudes and behaviors that's the meaning of enterprise culture or organizational culture the question is what are the barriers to successful enterprise culture <clears throat> successful enterprise culture because again candidate kind of culture can be positive or even negative it could be good culture or bad culture we have companies that have a culture of um, having top notch customer service others are, have may have opposite of that okay but that's not the question the question is discuss five barriers to successful enterprise culture what is your take resistance resistance is a good point <clears throat> you are right barriers to successful enterprise child resistance we can say resistance to change resistance to change you are right <clears throat> resistance to change resistance we are because we are talking about successful but we need to explain resistance to change first how is resistance to change a barrier to successful enterprise culture now here candidates employees may resist uh, enterprise culture that requires strong leadership commitment and support or well, let me put it different to explain how resistance to change is a barrier to successful enterprise culture now employees may resist changes to enterprise culture okay when we say successful you need to assume here that maybe the company is does not have a successful 
enterprise culture and the management may want to change that negative enterprise culture to be a successful enterprise culture changing from unsuccessful enterprise culture to successful enterprise. that process of changing may be resisted by employees because people ideally cling to all habits and practices in, even if they are not aligned with their desired culture so um, companies are always striving to to change organizational culture in order to achieve its objectives because candidates we organizations operate in an environment that is ever changing that may also call for change to enterprise culture you may have a company that has a, a lazy culture where employees are lazy or employees are not um, engaged okay where employees have uh, are not innovative where employees we just previously discussed something about uh, what was it was something we discussed here about uh, entrepreneurship 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 is a good enterprise culture and we saw the benefits we discussed here the benefits so a company may want to shift from laid back uh, position of employees the company may want to involve employees in decision making in giving them opportunity to come up with ideas to solve uh, problems that the company may have so that shift may be resisted that's why you're calling resistance to change employees may resist changes to enterprise culture because they are used to old habits okay employees may resist changes to their established routines and ways of working and that can hinder the adoption of new enterprise culture you understand but all in all nathaniel i, I would want to look at it from the aspect of uh, the leadership eh? because the change in culture will depend on how the management it is the role of the the company to uh, the company leadership to spearhead organizational culture change so your point is valid but i would want to look at it from the aspect of um, maybe skills on the part of the leaders are not, not only skills but also commitment if there is no commitment at the leadership level then that can be a hindrance or a barrier to successful enterprise culture you understand because we are here don't forget we are we are talking about enterprise culture which are just beliefs changing people's beliefs or let me use even a, a, a simple example like um, a family let us assume you are a head of a family as nathaniel okay if you are the head of a family and you, you feel that the, the the family beliefs and attitudes and behaviors are not successful are not positive it is up uh, upon you as the head of the family to spearhead that change so that your children your wife and the rest of the people that you are leading can change bad culture to maybe to good culture so making the people believe it is you having the necessary skills to convince them to change 
culture. I don't think the children have the, the need any skills because already they have current beliefs, values, which you, you may be the one who have impacted on them. All right? You understand? So in most cases, when you talk about culture and ethics, it all starts at the top. The tone you set, the leader sets at the top, determines on how the rest of uh, the employees behave or believe and all that. It is like uh, the beard is like oil flowing from the head to the beard. I wish I had beard. I don't have beard. <laughs> you understand? If you if you if you pour oil on your head, it will flow down to the beard, then to the gown, or to the coat. I have a coat. It's not a gown. If I was to even pour water, leave alone oil, because oil people have may have other views when I say oil. Let me say water. If you are to, if I was to pour water here, it will. This is the same thing applies when it comes to ethics and culture. So successful uh, organizational culture change depends on more more on the leadership than the employees. So when you say skills, I would I would uh, maybe explain it from that perspective. And I'm not just saying skills, but there is also the aspect of commitment. Lack of leadership commitment is a barrier. Lack of leadership commitment can be a barrier to successful enterprise culture. A successful enterprise culture requires strong leadership commitment and support. So if leaders are not actively involved in promoting and modeling the desired behaviors and values, it can be difficult to embed the culture throughout the organization. For example, if you have an unethical leaders who engage in fraud, who, who are corrupt, okay, any form of organization, it could be even be the government, it could be an organization. If a country has political leaders who are corrupt to the core, it's not easy to convince the, sub, the subordinates in government to be ethical because it flows down. I hope you understand what I'm saying. There's something I'm trying to say about leadership. And that is a principle. So it can be difficult to embed the, the successful culture throughout the organization if there is no leadership commitment, being committed to positive culture. Lack of employee engagement, lack, that is true, lack of employee engagement. And I'll even add participation, lack of employee engagement and participation. Because candidates, you will recall, I just defined enterprise culture as shared beliefs, attitudes and behaviors, shared. So where employees are not involved, where the employees do not participate, where the employees are engaged in the process of culture change, that is in itself a barrier. Because successful enterprise culture means that all the employees believe or have shared beliefs. Culture cannot be successful. Organizational culture cannot be successful if employees are not part of it. So a successful enterprise culture requires the active participation and engagement of employees at all levels. Lack of communication. 
or poor communication. Poor communication. There's something here we also said in this lesson about um, management. Okay, what was it? Something we said about management. Features of management. Benefits of poor communication can be a barrier. The management may have good intentions to change corporate culture. They may do everything, have the plan, decide everything on what they want to achieve. But the, if there is no proper communication, if there is poor communication, then that can hinder successful culture change. Effective communication, in other words, is crucial for establishing and maintaining a strong enterprise culture, communication. If there is a lack of transparency, if there is lack of open communication channels, or even just clarity about the desired culture, that can lead to confusion, it can lead to misalignment, and even resistance. Okay, resistance to change. Because sometimes employees resist to change because they don't understand what the change is all about. And they don't understand what the change is all about because the management has not effectively communicated what kind of culture they want to implement. You understand? So poor communication is a barrier. Poor communication. Then related to communication, there is the misalignment of organizational structure misalignment misalignment of organizational structure and systems misalignment of organizational structure and systems what do i mean misalignment of organizational structure and systems if the existing organizational structure, systems and processes are not aligned with the desired organizational uh, culture, it can create barriers to its implementation. Do you understand? For example, if you have a hierarchical or a tall structure a tall structure with with many organ uh, uh, organizational uh, management levels where the employees cannot uh, have access to the top management i'm giving an example of misalignment that can be a barrier to successful enterprise change misalignment with it is misalignment with, not of, misalignment with organizational structure. If the culture change is not aligned with organizational structure, is not aligned with the organizational system, is not aligned with the organization's processes, if the culture change, if what is being initiated, if the changes, organizational culture changes that are being initiated are not aligned with the organizational structure or they are not aligned with the organizational processes or systems, then that can be a barrier to the successful implementation of enterprise culture you understand so these are five barriers to successful enterprise culture one two three four five ten marks